Hi there. Welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about the Sebastopol Goose and everything you need to know if you want to add that to your flock along with your chickens. Before we get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So curious about whether the Sebastopol goose might be the right animal for your farm or home. In this video, I'll give you the information you need to know to make the decision. The Sebastopol goose is a type of domestic goose and is one of the most popular breeds in this category. They are known for their long slender necks and webbed feet which make them excellent swimmers. This animal is a breed of domesticated geese that originated in the city of Sebastopol. Their long necks and slender bodies characterize them. The geese can be used for eggs, meat, or to keep the grass short on golf courses and other areas where they're raised. So let's talk about the history of the Sebastopol goose. The Sebastopol goose is a domestic goose breed that is a descendant of the European gray lag goose. The exact history behind this bird's origins is a bit murky. However, it's believed that the breed was developed somewhere in Central Europe along the Danube and the Black Sea. Other records suggest that they originated in the Crimea and were sent out from the support of Sevastopol before arriving in England. In any event, Sebastopol was the first shown as a recognized distinct breed in England in 1860. It was shown under the name it has today, Sebastopol Goose, and prized for its white curly feathers, medium weight, and vibrant blue eyes. They found it just about everywhere by the end of the 19th century. In addition to being raised for exhibitions, Sebastopol geese were originally bred for their feathers, where people used them in quilting and pillow making. In the past, these animals were referred to as Danubian geese, but they were eventually dropped its name due to some confusion over an Irish goose breed of the same name. They have a ton of other nicknames too. For example, in Germany, Sebastopol geese are referred to as Strupp guns or Locken guns, which means unkept goose or curl goose, both names about the frizzled frazzled appearance of this bird's feathers. Sebastopol geese rose to popularity quickly, not only because of their appearance, but for many other qualities. These birds have a quiet temperament and don't like to wander far. Good news since they are relatively slow moving and don't like to fly. They are good natured, excellent foragers and fatten up easily. When it comes to raising Sebastopol geese for more utilitarian purposes, there is plenty of benefits too. These animals are great sitters in moderate layers. They are good natural mothers too, and they've never been used for large scale meat or egg production and are more commonly raised for ornamental purposes. Now let's talk about the appearance. More often than not, the Sebastopol goose can be identified by its feathers, which curl under. These are mostly flightless birds weighing around 10 to 12 pounds. These geese aren't the largest you'll find. However, it's not their weight that impedes their ability to fly, but instead their feathers. Curling makes it impossible for them to get any air. Sebastopol geese are typically white, but the colors can vary. The feathers on the breed's neck tend to be smooth and are sometimes gray-brown instead of white. There are color crosses that have produced buff, saddleback, and even all gray variants as well. Breast feathers can be smooth or frizzled. The birds have striking blue eyes, rounded heads, prominent eyes, arched necks, and keelless breasts. The blue color of their eyes is most common in the classic white Sebastopol, though some other variants produce birds with unusual brown colored eyes. As mentioned earlier, these geese are medium weight, with ganders weighing up to 14 pounds and geese only weighing at 12 at the most. Both the shanks and the legs are orange. Something else that's worth noting about this goose breed is that the feathers are remarkable in t their texture, the crinkled appearance, as well as the size. They tend to be much longer than the average goose feathers. Because of this, the Sebastopol geese looks like it has many more features, many more feathers than it actually does. A fleshy, compact bird looks larger at first glance than it really is because of the feathers. It has a short back and plump oval basket it. Its thighs are short and well muscled with equally short stout shanks. Only one Sebastopol color is recognized white. However, many breeders are working on getting different colored varieties recognized. Now let's talk about the Sebastopol goose temperament. These geese are known for being friendly and quiet. They're perfect pets for families who are concerned about aggression issues when raising geese. These birds are rarely hostile, instead more on the shy side. 
They aren't as vocal as other breeds, but can still be used as alarm animals since they'll honk when anything unusual is amiss. That said, they won't broadcast nearly as far and wide as other geese breeds. They are approachable, easy to keep, and stirring to look at. Sebastopols also make wonderful parents, even when used as adoptive parents for other goslings. They are prone to being broody and occasionally suffer from fertility issues related to their feathering and something we'll address in a second. While all geese forage to some extent, Sebastopol are some of the best at doing so. They enjoy weeding around your garden and since they aren't super heavy breeds, they shouldn't compact your soil too much. And let's talk about the uses of the Sebastopol geese. I've already told you that they are raised for eggs and sometimes meat, but let's talk about the eggs. If you decide to raise them for eggs, know that you won't be getting as many eggs out of your Sebastopols as you might get from your backyard chickens. The average female lays only 25 to 35 eggs per year. Of course, these eggs are huge, bright white in color, and they're big enough to make up for three or four chicken eggs. Sebastopol geese can be raised as reliable layers during the laying season between early spring and summer. Although Sebastopol geese Geese are somewhat smaller than those of other goose breeds are noticeably larger than those from chickens or ducks. They're most commonly chosen for exhibition or as pets. You can also raise Sebastopol geese for meat, like I said earlier. If you're going to slaughter the geese, you want to slaughter them early on. It'll help you avoid pulling pin feathers from the carcass since you will slaughter the geese before they molt their juvenile feathers and grow adult plumage. Another benefit of raising Sebastopol geese is that you won't have to worry about an odd carcass side due to the lighter feather color of these birds. It's purely a matter of aesthetics, but can make for a cleaner looking dressed carcass by the time you're ready to put it in the oven. Now let's talk about the lifespan. These geese can live for two to three decades when cared for properly with the average lifespan around 25 years old. Because of that, it's important you raise these geese only if you're up for the challenge. It's a lifelong commitment and the Sebastopol is a regal and intelligent bird. You can choose to keep them around as a pet for a long time, but many people choose to slaughter them early in their lifespan when being raised for meat. Now let's talk about what to keep in mind when considering a Sebastopol goose. If you're interested in large scale meat or egg production, then it's probably not the right choice for you. These animals aren't the most prolific in their egg or meat production. However, they make excellent pets or show animals. There are a few conditions to keep in mind here. If you're raising them for the show, you'll need to take a few additional steps to make sure your animals remain in tip-top shape. To preserve the health and appearance of their long curled feathers, keep your birds in clean, dry pens. This is gonna help you avoid broken or dirty feathers. Some people give their birds unlimited access to bathing water, while this can help the white plumage stay rinse-free of debris. Some people don't recommend this because the feathers of these geese don't shed water like normal feathers. These can cause the feathers to look unhealthy and ragged. Instead, please put them in an enclosure that contains tall grass. This will help them brush themselves clean. Just offer buckets of water in which your animals can submerge their heads. By doing this, the body feathers will remain dry while you can still maintain certain standards of cleanliness. It's also important to limit overcrowding with these animals. Not only can overcrowding impact the appearance of these feathers, but it can also reduce the likelihood of other health problems. You may wanna provide additional protection in cold, wet, and windy periods as well. These geese are relatively cold hardy. Their unique features can be a bit loose fitting and won't provide quite as much warmth as the feathers on other goose breeds. You can mate one gender with one to four geese when breeding your Sebastopol geese. If you happen to notice that fertility is poor, clip the feathers on the tail and back and those around the vent. Now let's talk about what to look for when purchasing these geese. It's not unlike shopping around for any other kinds of geese. Look for animals that do not have long rectangular bodies. For example, find a goose with a rounded body when viewed from the side and from above. It would help if you also avoided smooth breasts. You also wanna pay close attention to the feathering. Feathers on the breast should always be curled. Primary and secondary wing feathering should not be stiff. Instead, they should be soft, long, and pliable so that they will curl easily. Avoid birds with large amounts of gray if you plan on using these animals for exhibition. A trace of gray in young birds is okay and usually will go away after the birds have molted for the first time. However, in adults, you should avoid any color besides white. If you plan on keeping these animals for meat production, know that you will receive a well-flushed, medium-sized carcass. Again, keep one male with two or three females for the best results. So is this the right goose for you? If you've been considering raising a Sebastopol geese, but are not entirely sure if, you, if this unique breed's right for you or your family or farm, but we hope this video has provided some insight. We recommend doing plenty of research on the breed and consulting with experts before deciding when to get one yourself. Consider these questions before deciding. One, what kind of climate do I live in? Two, do I have enough room for my new pet geese? Three, 
is raising geese legal where I live? Four, will my neighbors approve? Five, how much time can I spend caring for them each day and weekend? After you consider these questions and it's still something you are interested in, go ahead and enjoy a lifelong companion. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. With that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.